great day everyone so today we are going to discuss international mathematics 0607 paper 6 which is investigation and modeling paper 6 has two parts in it one is investigation and another one is modeling the paper starts with a investigation and then topic is virus today and it has 20 marks you are advised to spend no more than 45 minutes on this part so this is the great advice from Cambridge okay let's start reading the information and it is very important to keep all the details in our mind to score the full mark in a field there are a large number of plants on a straight line this diagram shows the plants near the middle of the field so the plants are in the straight line on day one one of the plant is infected with a virus V yes it has been mentioned here as V on day two the plant is dead so the dead plant has been mentioned as D here and the virus infects the plants next to it so that has been mentioned as v and v here next this continues from day to day so this is the pattern on day three the previously affected plants are dead and then two new plants are affected by virus and it has been clearly mentioned here the diagram shows that the virus infects two more plants on day three so that the total number of plants that are infected day is five and complete this table the table has been already completed for one two three days that number of infected are dead plants are one three five and fourth day how many plants will be extra infected are dead so these all are going to be d d these two infected plants will be dead and then newly two plants will be getting so that it's going to be seven and obviously we are seeing that only the two plants are getting infected two extra plants so that on fifth day there will be nine plants either infected or dead so let's proceed find a formula for t in terms of n so here we have seen the sequence that is 1 3 5 7 9 to find that nth term let's find that what is this common differences so here we are getting that common differences too and yeah in the first step itself we have got that differences same so that it's going to be that linear sequence and we know that the tenth term of this sequence is 2n minus 1 on which day there are total of 97 plants that are infected are dead it is very easy if they have given that uh, the total number of plants affected because we have got already what is the nth term is so just equate that so that you will be get to know on which day the plants are infected are 97 so 2n minus 1 is going to be 97 and 2n is minus 1 look at that series plus so we'll be getting 98 and yes it is clear that n is equals to 98 divided by 2 which is 49 so n equal to 49 is the answer we are getting here let's proceed in another field there are large number of plants in equally spaced rows and columns previously it was a straight line and now they have given that plants are in the rows and columns the rows shows the plant near the middle of the field on day one one of the plant is infected with a virus v the virus infects all the plants next to it so the first day v and the next day next plants are getting infected so it has been given in the diagram here on day two there are totally five plants are infected on day three there are five dead plants and new eight plants got infected that has been mentioned in the diagram so in the center the next plants are getting infected here that has been mentioned as phi and the dead plants are d here let's proceed draw the pattern for d4 yes uh, to save the time i have done it already let's see what is the pattern is yes this is what the pattern we have here so in total we have 12 plants 12 new plants got affected by the virus let's proceed complete this table to show that number of infected plants each day so 148 they gave and recently we have got that that is 12 yeah we can find the pattern here except that first day that remaining all the days are getting added by 4 so fifth day it's going to be 16 because it's forming a square and if you have doubt in it you can use the space given and you can very well find that what is that answer is work out the formula for the number of infected plants p in terms of the day 
n for n greater than or equal to 2 why it is greater than or equal to 2 as i said before and the first day alone it has been added by 3 the common difference is 3 but for the next days it is going to be 4 4 4 so except the first day so we no need to worry about the first day the remaining all if you find it's okay and even this is also a linear sequence because here the first common decorative difference is the same so it's going to be 4n and to get this and 4 to start 8 8 minus 4 it's minus 4 I'm getting so answer for this subdivision is 4n minus 4 complete this table to show that total number of infected or dead plants each day so what does it mean we have seen that sequence it is 1 4 8 12 16 are the new plants which got infected day by day these all are infected plants and now they have mentioned infected are dead in total so they gave that 1 1 plus 4 5 here and 5 plus 8 13 then just now we have discovered that 13 plus 12 it's going to be 25 25 plus 16 it's going to be 41 so for this we are going to find out that what is the nth term is and here they did not give any conditions let's proceed so if you find the common difference here here it's 4 and here it's 8 and 12 16 then if you find the common difference the second time since it is not same so that I'm proceeding to the next step it's 4 4 4 it's same since we got the same term in the second one why am I finding yeah it's the answer for subdivision E since we got the same common difference in the second part it's going to be the quadratic equation so here what I got is 2a value is 4 which is 2a so this the value is 2a 2a equals to 4 yields a is equals to 2 then we know that what is this 4 is that 4 is nothing but 3a plus b 3a plus b equals to 4 and 3a is 6 6 plus b equals to 4 so that we are getting the value of b as negative 2 and the value here is a plus b plus c so this is the way of finding that quadratic sequence nth term so it's a plus b plus c is equals to 1 and we know that this is 2 minus 2 plus c equals 1 which gives that value of c as 1 we can write what is the nth term is I will write you the general form also it's a n square plus b n plus c is the nth term and here it is 2 n square minus 2 n plus 1 yeah we have finished this subdivision let's proceed to the next one <coughs> show that your formula works for n equals 6 okay let's see here whether it works or what so if n is equals to 6 then what is the answer we are going to get in total let's see here so one plant in the top so the three are infected here and Here it is 5 and here it is 3 again here it is 1 this is for the day 3 and we know that what will happen for the day 4 so after this I have two infected plants are going to be TD here and then 1D, 1D and 1D here, 1D here and 1D, 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 1D and then the top also 1. So this is for day 4 and day 5 it is again here, here, here. This 3 will become 5 now. Then this is going to be seven and these two plants then here 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 one extra plant here 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 then for the sixth day it is
so on either side I have to add one one plan so previously I have added there now I can count what is the value total 1 plus 3 4 5 plus 5 9 the 7 16 25 25 36 38 40 42 45 48 52 57 60 and 61 is what the answer I'm getting let's check by the formula the formula what we have got is 2n squared minus 2n plus 1 and if the day is 6 then we'll be getting 6 square minus 26 plus 1 and 2 into 36 minus 12 plus 1 so 72 minus 11 and it is 61 and even here in the diagram we got 61 so both are satisfying so we have sh shown that our formula works here next on which day there are exactly 221 plants infected or dead so as I said before it's very easy if the total number of infected plants are given and we have n term in our hand 2n square minus 2n plus 1 equals 221 that's given the question so now we can bring everything to the same side so that 2n square minus 2n plus 1 minus 221 gives minus 220 equals to 0 and there are two is the factor in the comment so that if you divide by it so that you're getting that new quadratic equation which is n square minus n minus 110 equals to 0 let's factorize this n and 11 into 10 and we want negative so it's going to be minus 11 so n minus 11 into n plus 10 are the factor and we know that n is a positive and n equal to 11 is the only possible answer and not n equal to 10 because it's negative negative is not accepted here so n equal to 11 is the answer for the subdivision let's proceed further in another field on day one eight plants in the arrangement below are infected so it's a different arrangement and two three three this is how that plants got infected in the first day itself on day two these plants are dead and the plants next to them are infected so show that the number of plants that are infected on day where n greater than or equal to three is 2 is 4n plus 3 so even this one I did to save the time so here is the part and first the second day the plants which are infected will be dead and the new plants which are around them is going to be infected so totally we have got 11 plants infected or dead so here we, we, can, we are having the 15 plants are infected and in the third day we are getting 19 plants so that 11 15 19 and let's check with the formula so on the second day so 11 15 19 are the affected plants that we have seen in the diagram and if you are finding the nth term yeah great we have got that same same common difference which means it's a linear sequence so our nth term is 4n and plus what what will give 11 it's 4 to 38 8 plus 3 so it the nth term is 4n plus 3 and the same has been given in the question we have proved it next find an expression for the total number of plants that are infected or dead on d n where n is greater than or equal to so here they are mentioning total number of plants that are infected or dead so let's write only the infected plants in the first sequence so it is first day it is 8 the second day is 11 third day is 15 fourth day is 19 if the sequence continues we'll be getting in further 23 and and so on okay so since they are mentioning that where n is greater than or equal to 2 okay we will be finding first what is the total number of plants that are infected so first day 
it's only 8 and the second day it is going to be 8 plus 11 it is 19 and we don't want to start with 8 because on the second day onwards we have to calculate and the second day totally there will be 19 plants will get affected and the next day it is going to be 34 because 19 plus 15 is 34 then 34 plus 19 will give the answer as 53 then 53 plus 23 will give answer as 76 and this sequence continues so here let's start finding the common difference so here if you find the common difference that is actually 15 and here the common difference is 19 and here the common difference is 23 and here we cannot go simply and then we have to take from 8 because the first difference is actually here 11 though we are not going to consider this as first term but we need that common difference what is this that's 11 okay then when you are finding the common difference here uh, we can see it clearly here they are all are same so the second common difference is same it's a quadratic equation let's start working on it so we are getting 2a equals to 2 so that sorry 2a equals 4 so that we are getting the value of a is 2 then next 3a plus b since we are going to start from the day 2 so we can avoid these values so 3a plus b we can take that as 15 3a plus b is 15 so 3 to start 6 6 plus b equals to 15 so we are getting the value of b which is 9 here on last a plus b plus c equals 19 so if you are calculating this then we are getting the answer for c as uh, 2 plus 9 11 so c is going to be 8 and when you are framing the nth term how we have to do it it is actually a n square but here it's going to be a into n minus 1 whole square because we did not take the first term directly because it's not going to be same or else in the question it has been given from the day 2 so n the term general form is going to be like this so if you apply it it is 2 into n minus 1 the whole square plus 9 into n minus 1 plus 8 and if you simplify this further we are getting 2 into n square plus 1 minus 2n plus 9n minus 9 plus 8 and here we are getting 2n square plus 2 minus 4n plus 9n minus 9 plus 8 will be simplified to minus 1 and here we can simplify it further so totally nth term is 2n square square term is and 9n minus 4n is going to be plus 5n and then constants are minus 1 plus 2 it's going to be plus 1 so what is the nth term we are getting here 2n square plus 5n plus 1 so we have completed yeah it's great we have completed that investigation it's over let's start with the modeling so modeling even this modeling also having the 20 marks and Cambridge is again advising us not to spend more than 45 minutes in this let's start the question and here we are going to use our GDC more explain why multiplying by 1000 divided by 60 changes kilometer per hour into meters per minute so here the distance unit we are going to change it from kilometer to meter and we know that to change kilometer to meter we have to multiply it by thousand and hour to minute it is nothing but divided by 60 because one hour equal to 60 minute when you are combining the operation multiply by thousand and divide by 60 it is multiply that answer by thousand in total divided by 60 that we can say as multiply by 1000 by 60 since that 60 is in the denominator let's proceed to the second question it's simple as cow walks at 5 km per hour so what speed they are walking it is 5 km per hour show that 5 km per hour is approximately 83.3 meters per minute 
just now we have done that how to convert any speed from kilometer per hour to meter per second sorry meter per minute 5 kilometer per hour so 5 then what we have to do is multiply by 1000 and divided by 60 it gives that answer as let's use the calculator and we are getting 83.3 meter per minute that's it we have shown it's just a calculator value if you multiply and show this that clear working of multiply by 1000 divided by 60 is necessary here and we have shown and then we got the answer as 83.3 p question is when walking at 5 km per hour the same speed they are walking the scout takes 120 paces in one minute so in one minute they are taking 120 paces how many meters does the scout walk in 30 paces okay so how many meters which says that we are going to calculate the distance distance means we know that it is speed into time so what is the speed it is 5 km per hour but it is here in minute what to do so let's convert this 5 km per hour to meter per minute because meters is that expected value we want for the distance and we know that just now in the first subdivision we have done that it is going to be 83.3 or else we can use the same so 5 into 1000 divided by 60 is the speed into time how much time we are taking is it one minute no it is not so one more extra information is given only for 30 paces so in one minute when they are able to cover 120 paces how many minute they will take how much minute they will take to cover 30 minute 30 paces so in one minute if they are able to cover 120 how many minutes they will take for 30 so here we are dividing by 4 so even here we have to divide by 4 it is going to be 1 by 4 is the answer and we have to multiply the time that is 1 by 4 minute and we can solve this first we can cancel 0 and 0 then 1 4 at 4 here we are getting the answer as 25 fours are 100 5 into 25 is 125 125 divided by 6 is what the fraction we are getting yes let's put in our calculator itself so directly we'll be getting the answer as 20.8 so 20.8 meters they will be covering it is no need to mention that meter because they already asked how many meters so it is making sense that 20.8 is a meter let's proceed further when jogging so previously it was walking and now it is jogging at 10 km per hour the scout takes 150 minutes per in one minute <coughs> how many meters does the scout jog in 30 paces so again the same we have to calculate the distance and that is speed into time what is the speed it is 10 km and to convert into meter per minute we have to multiply by 1000 and divide by 60 into time what is the time here here the pieces are different in one minute they are able to take 150 paces and how many minutes or how much minute they will take for 30 pieces here we are dividing by 5 so it is obvious 1 divided by 5 is the answer here so into 1 by 5 and if you put the whole thing in your calculator we are getting the answer as 33.33 or 33 1 by 3 in the fraction since it is non-terminating fraction I have written in the fraction format so 33 1 by 3 meters they will be covering or you can even write that answer as 33.3 next scout pace means to walk for 30 paces so first they have to walk for 30 paces then jog for 30 paces to keep repeating this so they are going to repeat this 30 paces of walk and 30 paces of jog show that the scout takes 27 seconds to walk 30 paces and then jog 30 paces so they are asking the time is 27 that's what we have to prove here but previously we know that for walking 30 paces that initial time what is the time taken for walking is it is 1 by 4 of the minute and for jogging 30 paces we have seen that it is 1 by 5 of the minute if you have doubt it's here so for jogging it is 1 by 5 and for walking it is 1 by 4 which is already circled this is what the time taken separately and if you add it we will be getting the total time so here we can 
take that LCM and yeah if you put in our calculator we are getting the answer as 9 divided by 20 minutes yeah don't forget that it is a minute then we want the answer in seconds so that multiply the value what we got and that by 60 so that we are getting the answer as 27 seconds yes we have proved it next find the average speed in meter per second the scout when using scout space so we are going to find out that average speed we have our total time taken and total distance covered so that it is very easy to find out that average speed speed is equals to distance divided by time so distance r so for the walking the time the distance covered is 25 by 6 plus how much time i mean how much distance they have covered it so it, if you feel it is not clear me write it like this plus they have covered in jogging 33 1 by 3 distance and just now we have completely calculated the total time taken for both walking and jogging is 27 yeah put these values in your gdc we are getting the answer as 2.01 meter per second or we can even write the fractional value to 1 divided by 162 also for the exact value for the further calculations you can use this so just write it here it will help you surely change your answer in part b into kilometer per hour so we are going to convert this answer to kilometer per hour the initially we have converted that kilometer per hour to meter per second but now we are going to convert meter per second to kilometer per hour so what are we going to do so the answer what we have got here should be multiplied by so first we have to convert that meter to kilometer so the answer what we have got uh, we can use that exact value that's better that we have to multiply by for seconds to minute let me use it so for seconds to r we have to multiply by 3600 and divided by 1000 why this because we are converting the meter to kilometer we have to divide it and from seconds to r we have to multiply it so, to one 162 that we are going to multiply by 3600 and we are going to divide this by 1000 so that we are getting the answer 72 by 9 or we can even write that decimal value the decimal value is 7.22 kilometer per hour and even this is not needed to mention it because they itself have asked it so 7.22 kilometer per hour next to fourth question to find a model average speed for using scout space assume that that different speeds the scout always takes 120 paces per minute when walking and 150 paces per minute when jogging the scout walks at x kilometer per hour and jogs at y kilometer per hour so that an expression for the distance traveled by the scout when walking 30 paces is 25 x by 6 so they are going to only walk and we know the time taken is 1 by 4 of the minute that is the time and the distance it differs because the speed is here different the speed is x so we are going to convert into meter per hour what is the speed is here it is x into 1000 by 60 what is the distance here so the distance is 1000x that is the speed by 60 into time time is 1 by 4 we can simplify this 1 4 set 4 why am i working here i can even use the calculator yes but they are asking us to show so that it is important to show that we'll be getting 250 here and 0 0 can cancel finally we are getting the answer as 25 x still remains divided by 6 that is the distance traveled by the scout in 30 paces next the distance traveled by the scout when jogging 30 paces is 10 y by 3 oh 
they gave that what is the value for jogging that is 10 y by 3 so previously we calculated for the walking which is 25 by 25 x by 6 show that a model for the average speed so average speed we are going to calculate and that too we have to just show that s equals to 5x plus 4y equals to 9 yes let's start so the distance covered by walk is 25x by 6 so that's what the distance we have because we know that speed is equals to distance by time so total distance in walking 25x plus 6 and in jogging it is 10y by 3 it's given here then divided by total time what is the time taken since they are taking the 30 paces just before we have calculated the time taken is 27 seconds and they are asking in kilometer per hour we know that what we have to do for kilometer per hour we have to multiply by 3600 and divided by 1000 this is what the calculation that we have to do actually so here what we can do is the denominator for the first fraction is 6 and 3 so let's write this as 25x by 6 plus 20y by 3 sorry 20y by 6 divided by 27 we'll be getting and that into here maybe we can do this calculation 2020 0, 0 cancel we'll be getting 36 divided by 10 then finally we are getting 25x plus 20y divided by 6 and since we have two denominator both we can combine it that into 36 divided by 10 so when we are simplifying 1 6 are 6 6 6 are 36 2 3 are 6 9 3 are 27 1 2 are 2 5 2 are 10 so 9 and 5 are remaining in the denominator and the numerator has 25x plus 25 which 5 as the common factor so 5x plus 4y is remaining in the numerator divided by 9 into 5 is remaining in the denominator when you are simplifying this to 5 we are getting the final answer speed is 5x plus 4y e divided by 9 is that we want to prove yeah we proved it next find the average speed using scout space when the jogging speed y kilometer per hour is twice the walking speed is x kilometer per hour just now we have got that average speed is s equals 5x plus 4y whole divided by 9 so now they have mentioned that y is twice the walking speed x so y equals to 2x is given if you are substituting in this we'll be getting the new answer it will be only in terms of x so 5x 4y twice of it is going to be 8x because y is 2x 4 into 2x is 8x divided by 9 and we can't simplify it any there so and 5x and 8x can be added so that we are getting 13x divided by 9 as the answer next find y in terms of x when the average speed is 1.5 km per hour so y is going to remain as y and x is going to remain as x but s is going to be 1.5x because they said that average speed is 1.5x so in 5x plus 4y divided by 9 we know that that is equal to s but now we are going to write that s as 1.5x we will be getting 5x plus 4y divided by 9 equals to 1.5x when you are cross multiplying this you will be getting that answer 5x plus 4y equals 9 into 1.5x which is nothing but 13.5x now we want only y so y equals to first this plus 5x can go that side it will become minus 5x sorry uh, mr x and whole divided by 4 which is the coefficient of y here and if you simplify we are getting the answer as 8.5x by 4 and if you simplify it further we are getting that terminal decimal which is 2.125x which is equals to y we are getting the formula we can even write this as a fraction up to you.
the average speed is 7 km per hour the jogging is 10 km per hour so both yes value and y value are given find the walking speed which means they are asking us to find out what is the x value so again we are going to use the same equation so 5x plus 4y 4y is what they mentioned as 10 so 4 tens are 40 divided by 9 is a number equals s yes, is yes, yes, the average speed they gave that as 7 so how can i find that x first 9 7 are 63 plus 40 will go there minus 40 multiplication 5 will come here divided by 5 that is equals to x and if i put this all the values in my calculator uh, it is giving me 4.6 km per hour don't forget to write that unit because they have asked only find the walking speed so we can mention it for the safer side let's go to the next question the scout now walks at 150 paces per minute oh my god so the time has changed now they are going a bit faster 150 paces per minute and jogs at 180 per minute so 150 per minute in the sense for change the model in question 4b for the average speed using scout space so 4b let's go there what is 4b is okay 4b is for 30 paces uh, x and y values are different there but we have to show that that average speed is s equals to 5x plus 4y divided by 9 but there it is for 9 paces even here we have to calculate for 9 pieces for 30 pieces but x and y values will get a bit changed so yep here only the timing is going to get changed that remaining all are going to remain the same so let's see there what is this 25 x by 6 and n y by 3 we are not okay to use the same but instead what we can use is we can use the, the direct values so for the question 5 it's 150 paces we know that for a 30 paces how much time now for 150 is 1 in the sense for 30 paces it is going to be 1 by 5 minute 1 by 5 of the minute and for jog it is for 30 paces it's going to be 180 now it's nothing but 1 by 6 of the minute let's start working on it so what is the average speed the total distance crossed so what are the things here changed the distance remains the same what is the distance is it is 25x by 6 and time is changed new time is 1 by 5 so we have to calculate the new time it is 1 by 5 and if you are simplifying this we are getting the new distance is 10x by 3 and for the new 10y divided by 3 is the previous distance and if you are multiplying this by 1 by 6 what we are getting here it is 10y divided by 18 let me check whether this is okay Okay. It's actually twenty five Y by nine. But what is the change I did? Yeah, so the distance is also getting changed here. what is the distance only the time has changed let's do that initially the speed is x in the sense that distance is 1000 x by 60 so this 1000 multiplying by 1000 by 60 is converting that kilometer per hour to meter per minute so into x and this is actually the speed and into time time is 1 by 5 which will give the answer as 1 5 at 5 and this is going to be 
200 and we can simplify this 20 by 6 or else we can simplify and write it as it is 10x by 3 and for the second part it is again 1000 y because it's y actually the speed for jog and that I have to multiply by the time it is 1 by 6 and here what I will get as answer only these two things I can do the zero can be cancelled so I am getting that answer as 100 y divided by 36 can I simplify it further yeah I can so it is 50 y or 25 y divided by 18 sorry it is 25 y divided by 9 and I need to calculate what is the total time also just now I have calculated what is the distance is distance is speed into time speed is 1000 x by 60 into the time is 1 by 5 and here 1 by 6 so that I have got new distances individual distances I am going to find out that average speed so that I can add the two distance and then for the time what I have to do I have to calculate the timing the timing is for the first place it is 1 by 5 for the second thing it is 1 by 6 so 6 plus 5 it is 11 11 divided by 30 is the time and I have to multiply this by 60 because to convert into seconds so this is simply I'm getting 22 seconds I can find what is the average speed is now average speed is equals to total distance which is 10x by 3 plus 25y by 9 totally it's we are going to divide by 22 because that's the time taken and here we can multiply this 30x plus 25y since we made that as a common denominator we can take overall divided by 9 and we can that we can merge with 22 because the two denominators we can merge in the single denominator we're getting 6x plus 5y whole divided by 9 into 22 to convert this into kilometer per hour because this is in meter per second we have to multiply by 3600 divided by 1000 that we know obviously then what we will be getting that answer here so first we can cancel these two zero and two zero one five are five and two five are ten then one nine are nine and here four nine are thirty six two are two 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 are four one two are two then eleven two are twenty two everything got cancelled only eleven remains in the denominator and the new average speed is 6x plus 5y whole divided by 11 this is what the answer we are getting since x and y are there maybe it will be a bit difficult to use our calculator also yes let's proceed further oh my god it's over yeah we have finished it we have finished it in the list time what is given okay you can practice all the best years take care